Now we return to the fifth estate. Think of it as a conspiracy theory, true or false test. A. When George W. Bush started his first oil company, who helped fund it? Osama bin Laden's brother and brother-in-law. True or false? B. After a terrorist bomb at a barracks in Saudi Arabia killed 19 Americans, who got the multi-million dollar contract to rebuild? The bin Ladens. True or false? C. On the morning of September 11, 2001, who was in a meeting at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Washington? George Bush Sr. and Osama bin Laden's brother. True or false? Actually, the answer could be D, all of the above. Because believe it or not, as far-fetched as they sound, each and every one of those things, the bin Laden link to the Bush Oil Company, the bin Laden construction contract after the terrorist bomb, and the bin Laden-Bush meeting on 9-11 is true. And what that means is that on that awful morning two years ago, the day everything seemed to change, the world was already a far more complicated place than most of us could even imagine. In order to truly understand what happened on September the 11th and the close relationship between the Bushes, the Bin Ladens, and the rest of the Saudi elite, you have to go back about 25 years and south a couple of thousand kilometers to Houston, Texas, where in the mid-1970s, George W. Bush was a young man just trying to learn the ropes in his family's two businesses, politics and oil. The Bushes were a pillar of Houston society. George Sr. struck it rich in oil, became a congressman, then director of the Central Intelligence Agency, where it's said he first won the friendship of the Saudi royal family by arranging CIA training for their palace guards. And George Jr. was trying to follow in his father's footsteps, a Harvard business grad, he dabbled in politics and the Texas Air National Guard. And it was about the same time that a man named Bill White, a former fighter pilot with a Harvard MBA himself, was recruited to work in Houston with someone with business and personal connections to both George Bushes. His name was Jim Bath. This fellow, James R. Bath, needed someone to run a series of real estate companies that would be um, grub staked by not only the political families but also by some foreign nationals the Saudis and so I came down on an interview and met Jim they opened an office in downtown Houston where Bill White became Jim Bath's partner and confidant but White says Bath spent most of his time dealing with his foreign partners a wealthy Saudi family the Bin Ladens he also ran a company in the same building called Bin Laden and Associates which Jim explained was a procurement company for the Saudis he bought a bank for them, he bought an airport for them, he started an airline for them, among other ventures in Houston, Texas. Now at that point, had you ever heard the name Bin Laden? No, I had not. Meant nothing to you? Meant nothing to me. But in Saudi Arabia, the Bin Laden's name meant a great deal indeed. They owned one of the largest Saudi construction companies. They were advisors to the royal family. They were the second richest family next to the royals with billions of dollars to invest abroad in places like Houston, where the Bush family lived. They moved into this estate in one of Houston's finest neighborhoods, a Bin Laden brother named Salam Bin Laden and a brother-in-law, Khalid Bin Mafus. Mafus was also one of the Saudi royal family's bankers. So is it fair to say that when the Bin Laden group establishes an office in Houston, the presence of the Bush family at that point had a lot to do with it? Oh, absolutely. I think that was essential, the essential element. And I don't think any of those dollars would have come into the United States or any of those assets been purchased had not there been this quid pro quo relationship with the, with the Bush family. While the Bin Ladens built their ties to Texas, back home in Saudi Arabia, they were making another kind of foreign investment. In 1979, the Soviet Union occupied Afghanistan. The Saudi royal family wanted to build a Muslim army known as the Mujahideen to defend Islam and force the Russians out. They turned to their trusted advisors, the Bin Ladens, who offered up a lanky 21-year-old named Osama. 
the man who personally chose Osama bin Laden to build that army would also become his mentor, Saudi Prince Turki Al Faisal. Last year on British television, he reminisced about the young bin Laden. In those days, he was uh, a young man who had uh, committed himself to helping the Afghan Mujahideen uh, liberate themselves from the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan and uh, he was doing a lot of good. Uh, he was uh, bringing uh, support and aid to the Mujahideen. Meanwhile, back in Houston, the Bush family was also on the move. George Sr. was about to become vice president, and his son made a career decision too. By the late 70s, George W. Bush was setting out on his own. He established an oil exploration company that he called Arbusto. A Spanish word that loosely translated means bush. But before Arbusto could find oil, it needed to find some money, operating capital. And apparently George Bush knew where to 